In this video, we're going to complete the CUDA software Infinite Precalculus Free Worksheet Instantaneous Rates of Change. Now for numbers 1 and 2, it says for each problem, find the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the given value. Now remember, the derivative of a function is the average rate of change as that limit of the change in x approaches 0. And for the instantaneous rate of change, we're going to find the derivative and plug in the given value to find the rate of change at that point. So to find the instantaneous rate of change of the function at the given value, we're going to need to find the derivative of the function and then plug in that given value. Now you can use the definition of derivative from the previous worksheet, or we can go ahead and use the trick we learned at the end. Remember the trick was, that our exponents get multiplied to the coefficient, so f derivative of x would equal 2 times 1, which is 2, and then the exponent decreases by 1, so x squared becomes x to the first, which is simply x. Remember, each term was worked independently. So moving on to our next term, x has an exponent of 1, 1, multiplied by 1 is 1, so then we'll be adding, because that term was added, we're adding 1, and then x to the 1 becomes x to the 0, which is 1, and 1 times 1 is 1. And then, lastly, we have our constant, but remember, constants go to 0. So our derivative in number 1 for the function x squared plus x plus 1 is 2x plus 1. Now to find that instantaneous rate of change, we're going to take this value of negative 2 and plug it in for x. So the derivative of the function at negative 2. That's 2 times negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 4, plus 1, which equals a negative 3. So the instantaneous rate of change of our function at the value negative 2 is negative 3. Moving on to number 2, we'll find that derivative. The derivative of our function f of x is going to equal, well, let's go through each of our terms. We're going to bring this 2 down and multiply it by the coefficient, and negative x we can think of as negative 1 times x. So we're going to have 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, and then x squared, we're decreasing that exponent by 1, so that will be x to the first, or simply x. And then, remember, our constant will go to 0. So our derivative for number 2 is negative 2x. And again, we're going to be plugging in negative 2. So the derivative of our function at negative 2 is negative 2 times negative 2, which is a positive 4. Now on to our next section. It says for each problem, we're to find the equation of the tangent line to the function at the given point. Now remember, the definition of a tangent line is a line that touches the curve at one point, matching the slope of the curve at that point. So the tangent line has a slope that's equivalent to the instantaneous rate of change at that point. So in order to find the slope of the tangent line, we need to find the instantaneous at the given point. So first, let's start by figuring out our derivative in number 3. For number 3, we have f of x equals x squared plus 2. Now remember, our constant is going to go to 0. So we're just dealing with our x squared term. And we're going to take the exponent, multiply it to the coefficient of 1, so we'll have the derivative of f of x equal to 2 times, now within that term, because we multiplied 2 by 1, we need to decrease this exponent by 1. So that will be x to the first, or simply x. So our derivative of our function is 2x. So we're going to take negative 2 and plug that in for x in the derivative of our function in order to find that instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of our tangent line. So the derivative at negative 2 is going to be 2 times negative 2, which equals a negative 4. 
So our instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line, is negative 4. So we have slope, and we also have the coordinates of the point. So now we're just going to use point-slope form. Remember, point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m, the slope, times x minus x1, where y1 and x1 are the y and x coordinates of the point that's known. So we're going to have y minus 6 equal to our slope, negative 4, times x minus x1, which is minus a negative 2. However, as opposed to subtracting a negative 2, I'll add a positive 2. So in my next step, I'm going to distribute negative 4 because I want my tangent line in the form of y equals mx plus b. So we'll have y minus 6 equal to negative 4x plus negative 8. Now I'll add 6 to both sides to get that y equals negative 4x plus negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2, but as opposed to adding a negative 2, I'll simply subtract 2. So here we have an equation for our tangent line to the point negative 2, 6. y equals negative 4x minus 2. So let's go ahead and graph that. We'll graph it using our y-intercept and our slope. So when we're at 0 in the x, we're at negative 2 in the y. Now we can use our slope to find the next point, or we can remember that we used negative 2, 6 in order to calculate this point. So negative 2, 6 is another point that's on this line. And if you want to double check with the slope, rise over run is either negative 4 over 1, or we could say 4 over negative 1. So if we go up 4 in the positive direction, we need to go 1 to the left for 4 over negative 1. And that would be another point on our tangent line. So let's go ahead and draw a line to connect. And there is our tangent line to the function at the given point. You can see that it touches the curve. So let's move on to number 4. And number 4, our function is 2x squared plus 2x plus 2, and we're finding the equation of the tangent line to the function at the point 0, 2. So in order to do that, we first need to find the derivative of the function so that we can plug in our x value to find that instantaneous rate of change, which is the slope of the tangent line at that point. So the derivative of f of x is going to equal, well, first off, our constant will go to 0. Looking at 2x, that's an exponent of 1. So 1 times 2 is 2. And decreasing that exponent by 1, we'll have x to the 0, which is simply 1. And 2 times 1 is 2. And that will get added to taking our exponent, multiplying it by the coefficient. 2 times 2 is 4. And then we're going to decrease that exponent by 1, so that will become x to the first, which is simply x. So our derivative is 4x plus 2. And we're finding that at the point where x is 0. So 4 times 0 plus 2 is equal, well, 4 times 0 is 0. And when we add 2, that will give us a positive 2. So the slope of our tangent line is 2. Now we're just going to use point slope form to solve for the equation of our tangent line. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we have y minus 2 equal to our slope m of 2 times x minus x1, which is x minus 0. Now when simplifying, x minus 0 is simply x, so we'll have y minus 2 equal to 2 times x. Then all I have to do is add 2 to both sides to get my equation of my tangent line to the function at the point 0, 2. And that's y equals 2x plus 2. 
So now let's go ahead and graph. Our y-intercept b is 0, 2, and that's also our given point. So we'll need to use the slope to find another point on the line, or we can plug in an x value and solve for y, and then plot that point. Let's go ahead and use the slope. The slope m we can think of as positive 2 over 1, so 2 up in the rise and 1 to the right in the run. Also, if we wanted to plug in a value for x, we could plug in negative 1 to get 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2, and when we add that to 2, we'll get 0 in the y. So we'll also have the point negative 1, 0. But all we need is two points to form our line, so let's just go ahead and graph. So again, y equals 2x plus 2 is the equation of the tangent line to the function at the given point. Now onto the last problem on this page, which is our critical thinking question. It says to look back at problem 1, at what value of x is the derivative 0? So this is number 1, and our derivative was 2x plus 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. Our derivative was 2x plus 1. And it asks, at what value of x is that derivative 0? So we're finding when our derivative is equal to 0. We'll plug in 0 as the value that our derivative is equivalent to and then solve. So 0 equals 2x plus 1. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides to get negative 1 equal to 2x. And then I'll divide by 2 to get that negative 1 half is equal to x. So the derivative is 0 at x equals negative 1 half. However, let's expand this further and take a look at that. So the derivative is 0 when x equals negative 1 half, which you can see is this point here. That point is also a minimum. And because the derivative equals 0, that means that at that point, the slope of our line is also 0. So we're going to have a horizontal line for our tangent line at that point. Let's go ahead and calculate that tangent line out. So we're calculating now the tangent line at x equals negative 1 half, which is when our derivative is equal to 0. So the slope m equals 0, so it's a horizontal line, but we need to figure out what that y value is so we know what our horizontal line is equivalent to. And in order to do that, we'll just take x and plug it in for our function to find what the y value is at that point. So we'll have f of negative 1 half, that equals negative 1 half squared plus x, which is plus negative 1 half plus 1. So this is equivalent to 1 fourth plus negative 1 half plus 1, but I'll write these all over the same denominator. So 1 fourth plus negative 2 fourths plus 4 fourths, and that will give me a positive 3 fourths. So at negative 1 half in the x, we're at 3 fourths in the y. So that means that our tangent line, now that we have x1 and y1, we can solve for. But we know that it's a horizontal line where the slope is 0, so ultimately it's going to be equal to simply 3 fourths. But let's use point slope form and plug that in. So we have y minus y1, which is 3 fourths, equal to our slope m, which is 0, times x minus x1 which is negative one half, so I'll add a positive one half. Remember, zero times any quantity is zero, so this will go away. And adding three fourths to both sides, adding three fourths to zero, it will give me that our tangent line is equal to three fourths. So there's our tangent line at the point 
negative one half three fourths. I want to note that at any extrema, the derivative is going to be equal to zero. And wherever the derivative is equal to zero, the tangent line is going to have a slope of zero and therefore be horizontal at those extrema points. So finding the derivative of a function and then setting it equal to zero is one quick and easy way to find the x value of an extrema. And with that, we wrap up our CUDA software infinite pre-calculus free worksheet instantaneous rates of change. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, like, subscribe, and share.